Number eight. So with, uh, with this, we're talking about an earthquake situation. Uh, and this is actually a take on one of the NCARB questions. Um, so you may feel like you've seen it, uh, and that was actually sort of purposeful because uh, it's a bit of a trick. So the actual one in the NCARB piece looks like this and has the same uh, arrows. And in that question on the NCARB mock exam, the uh, point that you are most worried about, so the question is, in the elevation of a multi-storied building subject to earthquake forces, uh, this elevation that's shown, which location is likely to be the biggest problem? So on the NCARB version of it, that spot right there, so the C one would be the correct answer. And the reason for this is, once you start thinking about it, it totally makes sense. Right? If I have an earthquake, what's it doing? It's shaking this building up, so it's shaking this thing back and forth. Well, that taller element is going to shake in a different pattern than this big block at the bottom. This is still going to shake, but it's going to be much less of a shake than the, uh, this bigger, uh, taller piece, which is going to start to have these, you know, much, uh, uh, much bigger, that's probably a little dramatic. Um, but it's going to have these much bigger sort of motions. Well, where's the, all the action happening? It's happening right at that inner corner, that re-entered corner. Uh, and so uh, it's flowing one way to the one side, and then it's flowing the other way to the other side. And there's a huge set of forces happening right in that spot. But that's not what I drew. What I drew was this one with these uh, very tall columns. You can see these are at least a, a double height story here compared to these other floors. And this big, tall space with just these columns, now, you know, maybe there's very stiff shear walls back farther in or something, but it's sort of clear that the way that's drawn is that this is meant to say, this is a thing that's happening on this elevation. There's something going on here. And what that, what that is, is it's an irregular massing. It means that I have a very heavy mass up above uh, and not only that, but an irregular heavy mass up above, so it's going to have lots of different movement going on. And then I have this very um, uh, light, because it's just open columns, very light mass down at this bottom area. Uh, lots and lots and lots of uh, famous earthquake uh, failed buildings are failed because of this. So the answer is actually A. Uh, because what happens is this big block, imagine if you have this thing, imagine it's a brick sitting on a bunch of pencils that you've stuck into the ground, and then you start pushing the brick back and forth. You know, the brick isn't going to fall apart, it's the pencils that are going to start to wobble and fall over. Uh, and so this area can very easily find that these columns start to get squinched uh, and it just all comes crashing down. So A is a huge big problem. C would be the next problem and is probably actually also a correct answer, uh, but uh, in my mind, I think A is a more correct answer, uh, which is one of those things that the exam does quite often. Um, so you might think about, well, uh, you know, what could we do about this? Well, for one, we you know, don't do a light first floor like that or even up in the middle space. Keep it all consistent as much as you can when you're in an earthquake zone. Uh, and instead of having like this original one, this sort of kind of elevation L, what if we did it uh, where we had a tall building and we did a separate, sorry, a little off there, and we made these two separate buildings just from a structural standpoint, uh, but still made it so you could walk back and forth between them. Right? Then this building is going to you know, move at its pace, this building is going to move at its pace, and everything's great. Right? So this is sort of one of those examples where if you saw a couple of different versions, there are things that, oh, maybe this, the, you, it's not that you can't do this building, you just have to find a way to do this building. What do you think the issue is if you did it this way? Because this has its own problems. Right? The issue on this one is, this thing is rocking back and forth at a different uh, amount and a different pace than this lower structure is. And so the issue here is, do I get a spot right there where they're pounding each other, where one is 
uh, literally banging into uh, the other, uh, and I get a, a problem point there. So I would have to make sure that the, uh, the amount of distance that it was going to be swinging as it went through uh, its various uh, motions set up, set up by the uh, earthquake would be within that distance so that it structurally wasn't damaging itself uh, in that process. Uh, it's sort of assumed that in an earthquake you're going to have some damage. Like the, the, the point is not to have zero damage. The point is to have uh, as little as possible structural damage so that it's actually the buildings are staying up and keeping people alive inside them and you're not having a huge amount of uh, damage in of uh, decorative elements that can cause other kinds of uh, uh, you know like big things falling on people or something like that um, so it's okay that these things might uh, bump into each other as long as what they are going to break is something that's not going to be a major structural aspect so you can figure out how much space in between you would need uh, just by understanding the amplitude of the, of the movement.